Hello all, welcome to at another episode on the database technologies. In this tutorial, I'll cover MySQL 8 administration for beginners. This particular tutorial is recorded on Fedora. However, you can use you can use Red Hat or Oracle Enterprise Linux or Ubuntu. Steps are pretty much similar. If you want to install it on Windows, that would be part of some other tutorial, not this tutorial. This particular tutorial is recorded with a view that you have some basic understanding of the Linux, but you have no understanding of how the MySQL works or you have never worked with MySQL databases. Now, this is a completely beginner's tutorial and I hope after watching this particular tutorial, you will be able to set up the MySQL 8 uh, in your environment, in your personal laptop. This tutorial will work in your personal laptop or if you want to do it in your work environment or in your project requires it, you should be able to set MySQL. This is a very basic training and it will allow you to get started with MySQL 8. It won't make you an expert. However, you will be very familiar on how to connect to MySQL, how to start the MySQL database, how to create a database, etc, etc. So I welcome you to at another episode on the database technologies and I hope you enjoy this tutorial. Let's begin with the tutorial. This particular tutorial is done on VirtualBox 7.0.6. Fedora Server 37 and MySQL 8.0.32 is used to perform this particular exercise. Let me repeat, these are the latest version available as of now. This particular tutorial is recorded on 31st March of 2023. So when I'm recording this, right now I got Fedora Server 37, MySQL 8.0.32 and VirtualBox 7.0.6. These are all the latest softwares as of today what we are going to learn and we are going to learn a lot as you can see on the screen we are going to install the mysql database server we are going to start and stop mysql we are going to connect to mysql we are going to create the first database we are going to create the first table we are also going to create a user we are going to take the backup of the database we are going to drop the database and we are going to restore the database now what I'll also do is I will be recording another tutorial, the part two of this particular tutorial. Well, I will teach and that will be an completely optional. Some people don't like. So all of these things I will be doing using the putty or the command line, the Unix term terminal. So the, the some people don't like the putty or some people don't like the command line. So for those people, that is a tool, MySQL Workbench that works on Windows, that works on Ubuntu that works on Fedora. So we will install MySQL Workbench and we will connect to the our database using MySQL Workbench. So I will also cover how to connect using to the database using MySQL Workbench. And we will also repeat the same steps such as how to connect to the database, how to create the database, how to create your table, create user, etc, etc in using the MySQL. So we will MySQL Workbench. So that will be the part two. But in the part one, we will do it all using the putty. So let's begin. So what I'll do is I will not explain. I will I will just explain the first part. So two ste steps to set up the database server. The first thing that we need to do is we need to download the community edition YAM repository. So we'll be downloading the YAM repository. We will be installing the YAM repository using the yum local install command we will be installing the yum repository that we downloaded we we should be downloading the fedora we, if we, if it's a different operating system you download the op, the yum repository based on the operating system the yum repository differs based on operating system it differs based on the edition so if you are using the fedora 30 fedora core 36 or if you are using the red hat you should use a different yum repository we will verify that i don't have the yum repository so yum repo list will be used to verify that i do not have the mysql yum repository then we will be installing the yum once we install the yum repository you'll see that yum mysql repository has appeared then what we are going to do is we are going to install the mysql server using the yum minus y install mysql server 
And then what we are going to do is we are going to create a separate directory for MySQL data file. Now here is the point. This is completely optional. By default, the MySQL that is that will be a file called etc.myconf that file gets created as part of the installation so that particular file will have a default location for your data directory and the log file and the pid file the pid is a process id file but i do not want to use the default location so we will edit that particular default file and we will show i'll show you how to change that particular values to some other location and we'll create We'll edit that particular location to create a different directory and set that particular directory as the data location. So we will do that. And then once that is done, we are ready to start our MySQL database server. So we are ready to start our MySQL database server. But before before explaining this particular part, let me let me just let me do this particular exercise. So, you know, let me cover the tutorial. Let me explain the tutorial, do the tutorial, come back to the next set explain so that it will be in a flow so let's do that let me connect to the box so i'm going to connect to my box let me make it in the center so that you know you can watch it nicely and clearly so let me make it in the center i know that it is not exact center i host name ctl you can see it's the virtual box i'm using virtual box and i'm using fedora linux 37 so that's where it is and let me show you rpm minus qa grep for maria and you should be able to see that there are two maria db packages but let's run the same command for mysql and you can see that literally there are no mysql packages on this particular machine so mysql is not even installed now let's try to install mysql so m install minus y mysql and you can see that you know it is trying to install the mariadb which i don't want to do because i actually want to install the mysql so let, let's i cancel that so now what i'm going to do is first thing is open your browser whichever browser is of your choice open the browser of your choice and say download mysql and you you will go to this particular link and we are going to say mysql community downloads then we are going to say mysql yum repository so let me repeat what i did i just search for download mysql click on here then i went to mysql community downloads then i said mysql yum repository and then i will be choosing because i'm doing this on fedora 37 i'll be choosing this download this it's a small package if you want to sign in you can sign in if you don't you can say just no thanks just start download the download completed it's a 10 kb it will download as soon as you click it it will get downloaded provided you have internet connectivity let's close this our work in the firefox or the browser is done we have no longer work and let's go to the location where let's go to the location where we have kept that particular file so let's go to this particular location look for that particular file that we downloaded and you can see mysql 8 community fedora code 37 this is the yum repository before installing that particular file let's verify what are the m repositories i have got yum repolished these are all the fedora internal repositories i do not have any mysql repository so the the command that i'll be using is yum minus y local install and I'll give this particular file. I'll give this particular file and I'm going to install that. And that's completed. Let me clear the screen. Let me run the M repo list. And now you can see on your screen that we got MySQL repository in our machine. So that's all good. The first part is done. The repo part is done. So the first part is done. Now we have verified that repo is there. It's time to install the MySQL server. So let's use this particular command yum minus y install mysql server let's use that particular command this is the command that i'm going to use and this particular command is going to install the it's going to install the mysql server on our machine before doing that let me again show you rpm minus qa grep mysql i i do not have any mysql i have only the mysql yum repository file apart from that i do not have anything and let's run this particular command and it's going to go off the internet and download the mysql packages and 
it's going to install the reason why I said that I said minus Y. So it's not going to prompt me now. And I'm going to clear the screen now and run M uh, RPM minus QA. And you can see that I have got a couple of MySQL RPMs or MySQL server is installed on my Fedora Linux box. All good. So the installation part is done. Now, here is what I said. At this moment, I am ready to start my MySQL server. But, but what is going to happen is like it's going to create that internet the databases in a default location, and that is governed by a file called cat etc my.conf. So this particular file governs the this particular file governs all of the parameters. So you can see data directory socket. I'll, what I'll do is like I'll clear this and I'll say tail minus 20. So this particular data directory socket. So this particular location. So where lib this is the directory where it will create the data data files, etc, etc. If I go to that particular directory, it will be completely empty. The first time the MySQL starts is going to initialize that particular directory is going to initialize that particular directory. Now, I do not want that to happen. I do not want my database or data files under this particular directory and I can change it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit that particular file. So let's let's run uh, G edit. So let's do G edit. So no, not not that not that file. No, no. So let's let's run. Yeah, and I'm going to edit this particular file. And what I'm going to do now is instead of the data directory, I'm going to comment this data directory. I'm going to comment this log directory and I'm going to comment this PID file. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this and I'm going to change this to another location. Say, let's say dbd slash mysql slash data one. So I changed that. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to also change the location of the log error and I'm going to change the location of PID file. Again, you can keep them. If this is completely optional. You can keep them at a default values, but I do not want it at a default value. And I wanted to show you how to change it. So that's all good. So we changed instead of accept the socket file. I changed the log file. I changed the PID file. I changed the data directory. Now let's create this particular directory. So let's let's save this close this verify that that particular file got saved let's cat it once again and you can see the data the original data directory log error and pid file is commented out let's create this particular directory so make directory this particular directory give the permission to mysql user for this particular directory let's do that that's not ch mode why did i say ch mode ch own let's do that clear and now what I'm going to do is let's yeah, that exists. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to now that we have set up this particular directory and we have edited the myconf, we are now there to start our MySQL service. Now, let me explain the document again. So how to start the MySQL database is you will use a command called systemctl start mysqld there are other ways of starting the mysql but this is one of the way so we are going to use the systemctl start mysqld before doing that let's verify if the mysql service is running so let's verify and this shows that there is no mysql service which is running and let me let me go to the location the data directory location and let's verify if there are any files in that particular directory so let's cd to that particular directory and ls minus l and it's completely empty all good completely empty now what i'm going to do is i'm going to say system ctl start mysql d this is the command that I'm going to use to start my MySQL service and I'm going to run this and if all goes good, the MySQL service will be running. So give it a minute. The first time it takes time. Now if I run ls minus l, you can see that that particular directory, th this particular directory dbd slash MySQL data one, that particular directory was completely blank and now it has got this internal files. What are these files? These are internal, these are the, the the log files, data files, 
etc etc these are internal files to the what explanation of these files is beyond this so in some other tutorial maybe i'll cover but for today just understand that these are the the files and now if i run the ps minus ef grep minus sql you can see the mysql d process is running this is all good or i can use the systemctl status command also to look at the mysql process and you can see that mysql d service is running which means my mysql is currently up and running all good so we have successfully installed mysql we have successfully started our mysql service so using the systemctl start mysql d command we were able to start our mysql service now it's time to connect to our database server to connect to our database server we need a password and where is that particular password that particular password would be in the file called mysqld.log and how do i know that that particular password will be in this particular file so what i'm going to do is under this particular directory you can see that there is a mysqld.log and if i grab that particular directory if i grab that particular file and if i say grab minus i temporary i should get a temporary password and this particular temporary password is really a temporary password i will not be able to use this particular password for any other reason apart from connecting it to, to the sql server database and this is a literally a user useless password i just it needs i need this password just to connect for the first time but i would be not be able to do and how do i locate where is this particular file you you know that particular is nothing but this particular file is nothing but the same location that i specified in the mysql dot sorry my, not mysql dot my dot conf grep for minus i log and you can see here i specified this particular location so you this is the same file so get this particular file and grep for the temporary password and here i got you can see that it's exactly the same password kxau1 so that's the same password so this is the temporary password now using this particular so how do i connect to the mysql so now it's time to connect to our so the command would be mysql minus u the user is root minus p and enter and copy this particular password and paste this particular password and you can see we got connected mysql version is 8 server version is 8032 and we have connected to our mysql there is another way and it's not a good way it's if it's a local machine it's fine but it's not what we can do is we can specify the password on the command line rather than you know pressing the enter but this particular password everybody can see is your personal system this is fine on your local machine this is fine never in your work environment so that's all good so we got connected so we specified now what i'm going to do is i'm going to say i'm going to say show databases and it's not going to work so there is a syntax error so show databases you must reset your password it's not allowing us to find out what databases are there okay let's try to create a new database create database test it will not work you must reset so it's whatever we do whatever we do it's going to give us the same message which means that you know the temporary password is completely useless it allows us to connect to the database server and it is it ask us to reset the password so the first thing that we need to do is we need to change the root password how to do that so we identified we got the grep temporary password we connected to connect we said minus mysql minus u root minus p we pressed the temporary password now it's asking us to change the temporary password the command would be alter user root at localhost identified by give a complicated password a complicated password because root is a super user give a complicated password so let's do that let's take this particular command hit it hit here and that's all good now what we are going to do is we are going to exit clear and now i'm going to use the new password that i used and this is a permanent password and this password is going to allow us to do the actions such as show databases so we can see 
that show databases is the command to list the databases which are present in our database server and we can see that we have got four databases now did i create these databases no these are not one that i created these are the internal databases for the sql mysql these are used by the mysql to you know to perform the necessary actions on your on the mysql database now now it's the password is changed we were able to connect to our database server all good how do we create the database to create the database the command would be so let's learn let's let's learn how to create your first database so to create the database the command would be create database test now there are other options that you can specify while creating the database i'm not going to go into those details you can you can learn it or maybe for some other tutorial but to create the database, you will say create database test. So that will allow you to create your first database. So let's run this particular command. And once that is done, let's say show databases. And you had four rows. Now you got five rows. And you see you have a database called test in your system. So all good. So now we created a new database. So show databases. And you can see that you got a new database called test in your system so we got we created a new database called test if you want to drop this particular database you will say drop database test and if i say show databases again you can see the test is gone so the database is dropped and if you did not have the backup there was no way to recover the data which is present in that particular database however that database was an empty so that was okay but it's a bad practice to drop a database without taking a backup so make sure you take the backup of your database before dropping so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to i'm going to create that particular database back again because we we want to do something so let's let's understand so we we create we will create the database called test then what we are going to do is we are going to create a new user called test1 and we are going to give the password now don't give the same password as the root password here i have is my tutorial it's okay but don't give the user same password as the root password give a separate password because the root is really a super user password make sure root password is secure and complicated so give a separate password and we are going to create a separate user called user test one with this particular password and what we are going to do is we are going to grant all privileges on test database to this particular user so this particular user will have the all the privileges on the test database on, alone only on the test database so let's do that so what i'm going to do is i'm going to repeat this so create database test i don't have the test database because i dropped it so verify it show databases you can see that i do not have the test database create database test all good the database got created if i do show databases i got the test database all good now what i'm going to do is now i'm going to create the new user i'm going to create a new user called test at localhost i'm going to do that so you can see create user test one at localhost and now this is not going to work there is a problem with this command let me fix that thing so yeah that now this should work so what i'm saying create a new user called test1 and give this particular password you can change this give some complicated password enter and query okay so we got a new user created in created in our environment now the next part is we are going to grant all the privileges on only one database only one database so before doing that let me connect to another session and this time i will say mysql minus u test user test one user minus p give the password of that user which is this password here to this particular user and and enter and show databases and you can see that this user this user cannot see any other databases any other databases apart from the information schema and performance schema which means this particular user has no rights so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to but we know that there is there are other, other databases such as test etc etc but this user cannot see it now what i'm going to do is i'm going to i'm going to say grant all privileges i'm going to say grant all privileges on test that's done let's see if we can see this particular 
and you can see he now the test the user now the test user so the test user that connected can see the third database called test the reason for that is because the, we we gave we gave all the privileges on this particular database to test one user all good all good so now what we are going to do is we are now we we learned we know how to connect to the database so that the command was pretty simple so mysql u so let's let me show it to you so the command to connect to the database as a different user so instead of root you will say minus u test one so the name of the user minus p you can press enter here sorry clear enter there is a that is that minus u has got this uh that's a problem of yeah so enter the user pass one two three four hash and you can see we can connect or the another option that i mentioned and that's not a good option is you can give the password as this and this should work there are other options as well so you know there are other options what you can do is you can say minus minus password and you can press and this one this also works so you, you are saying you are instead of minus p you are giving the full password is equal to this also works so there are multiple ways okay so we learned how to connect to the database i'll close this session and we are now what we are going to do is we are this particular user the the test one user this particular user is 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 going to create a table called employee so we will create a new table called employee in in our database so let's do that let's take this particular command so as test one user i'm creating a table called employee and before creating this particular employee table let's see let's connect to that particular database so use test one so use use test use command you can see the database got changed so use command allows us to select the database with which we are going to work so now we are connected to the test database if i say show tables you can see that there are no rows in it empty set because it's it's just an empty database that we created we never created any table so show tables shows that is completely empty let's go ahead and create our first table let's do that now if i run show tables then you should be able to see one table called employee so that is one table called employee now if i try to run select star from employee i should be able to see that there are no records empty set again because we just created that particular table we did not insert any record so let's go ahead and insert one record into that particular table so let's do that that's done and now if i run select star from employee you can see we got one record instead of empty set so we created we created a database we connected to that particular database using the use test command use test command we saw the list of tables using the show tables then we created a new table we look we verify that the table is present we looked at if there are any records none records we inserted the first record into that particular table and then we were able to select that particular record so all good now it's time to drop this particular database but before dropping the database what i'm going to do is i'm going to take the backup of this particular database i'm going to take the backup of this particular database so so do, to do that i'm going to create a directory called you know make directory and i'm going to go to that particular directory just now i created ls minus l is completely empty all good there is no files in that particular directory now now the command that i'm going to use to take the backup is a slightly bigger command so we are now going to use the utility called mysql dump so i'll i'll run this particular command but before running that particular command i'll show you that command so exit clear and i'll paste this command so what i'm going to say here I'll, I'll, mysql dump connect as a root user give the password which is the password of the root and this is not going to work actually because the the password of the root does not have the dollar is it would fail i'm saying the result file so th this is where the backup will be stored so under the dbe backup the directory that i just created is going to store and for which databases so for the test database so i'm going to run this particular command so let me just make it a little bit big so that this particular command fits on one line so mysql dump root user password of root user where the backup is going to store and for which database 
this and before doing that let me let me show you that ls minus l is completely empty and now i'm going to do that and that's done and if i go here if i go here you can see that i got the backup of my test database now what i'm going to do is i'm going to i'm going to connect to my did this one and i'm going to clear the screen i'm going to show the databases and i'm going to drop the database called test and i'm going to i'm going to now verify that test is gone the test is no longer there all good so now we lost the test database so now it's time to restore so to restore our database let's let's run the simple command source give the location of that particular file so source backup backup underscore test dot sql that's done clear the screen show databases the test has come back again verify that you are able to connect using the test one databases test one user because that's the user who had the full permission on this particular database so let's connect to this particular database using the test one user verify that the employee table is present so connect to that particular database called using the use test one access denied for access denied for okay there is no test one actually i made a mistake use test okay uh, reading that's all good so you know let's okay let's clear this particular so the test user is connected to the te test one user is connected to the test database show tables we should be able to see an employee table select star from employee and we should be able to see our first record so we learned how to drop the database how to drop the database and how to how to back up the database how to drop the database and how to restore the database so to drop the database you to back up the database we used mysql dump then we verified that the backup file is created then we drop the database verified that database is dropped and we restored that particular database using the source we specified which which backup we are using and again when we saw the show databases and we verified that our employee table came back into our database so this this is what we have done till now so we'll we install the mysql database server so i said i will show you start and stop but i only showed you start i did not show you stop which i'm going to do in a minute so connect to mysql we learned how to connect to mysql to create your first database so let's let's go back okay so to install the mysql server first we installed the repository and all that we did is yum minus y install mysql server that's all we did the, to start the SQL server, we said systemctl start mysql d, then we verified that mysql service has started. We grabbed the root, the root password, the temporary root password from mysql d.log. We connected using the temporary password. We changed the temporary password to something permanent for the root user. We created a new database called test. We created a user called test1. We granted all the privileges to to the test one user on the test database we connected using the test one database test one user we created a table called employee we inserted a record in employee we selected from employee we took the backup of the database test we we verified the backup is created we dropped the database test we verified the database is dropped we restored the backup using the source command we verified the database is back again we verified that original table is back again so this is what we all learned now as i mentioned this particular tutorial we are going to cover the mysql workbench in in another tutorial not the, as part of this tutorial because this particular tutorial will be very long, lengthy and i know that you will get bored so and this that is an optional tutorial only for those people who want to use the mysql workbench but those people who are comfortable with the command line can can skip that particular tutorial and start using the mysql so i hope you learned something new today i hope you will be able to set up the mysql environment the commands that i used 
are very similar to MySQL 5. So if you wanted to use MySQL 5, you can still use MySQL 5. You have to make sure that the OS that you are trying to install is compatible with the, the, with the binaries that you are installing. This particular tutorial was done on Fedora. The same steps will work on Red Hat Linux. The same steps will work on Oracle Enterprise Linux. A similar steps will work on Debian or Ubuntu. Similar, not the same, similar because it has got a different architecture, but a similar steps will work on Ubuntu or Debian. Now, if you similar steps will also work on SUSE Linux. Now, if you want to install MySQL on Windows, that will be part of some other tutorial. Not today, but I will definitely cover how to set up the MySQL 8 on Windows Server and we will learn on that. I hope you enjoyed this particular tutorial. I hope you learned something new. I hope after watching this particular tutorial, you will be able to set up the MySQL 8 in your environment and you will be able to take the backup. You will be able to restore the backup. You will be able to create the database. You will be able to create the table, create the user, etc, etc. Thank you for watching and see you in next tutorial. Till then, bye-bye.